sis, I'm sorry, but your hair is not thriving. Okay. Hey everybody, Ashley here, and I'm back with another hair video. So in this video, I am basically going to be giving you guys five tips on what it's like to be natural or five tips that you just need to know about being natural because a lot of people got it mixed up. So we're going to set some things straight and I'm going to let you know these five tips and y'all can take it and, and run with it, do whatever, but y'all need to know this. Number one, also as you see, I got notes because I'm serious about this. I'm serious. That everybody's hair is different. Your hair may not look like the same person when they do a certain hairstyle. You might see a picture and you want that done, it's not gonna happen. And do you know why? Everyone has a different hair routine and a very important thing that you really need to understand, everybody has a different hair type. Knowing your hair type is gonna really help you in the long run, but somebody who has type three ABC hair, is not going to do the same thing that a type four ABC hair person does. It's just not. When I first became natural, maybe it was around 2016, the most popular natural hair videos were of girls who had, you know, a type three hair, which is fine because I enjoyed their video. My problem was I didn't understand that my hair wasn't gonna turn out the same way. So they might, do a wash and go or a twist out and only use some you know watery leave-in conditioner product and then gel and the hair come out good uh -uh. no sir not me it didn't work out that way i tried it my hair came out crunchy i didn't know what the hell was going on so like i said you just got to be realistic about your hair expectations but not saying that you can't use the same products or do the same thing that a person with a different type of hair can do. It's just you might have to use the products a little bit differently. So if for me, for example, if I do look at someone's video who has type three hair and they say they're gonna use a leave-in conditioner in a gel, I know that the leave-in conditioner that I use has to be a thick product. It can't be watery because I need something that's gonna moisturize my hair. Otherwise, it's gonna come out dry and crunchy and I am flaky. Ooh, don't get me started on flakes. Two, it's hard work. It's, it's a lot of hard work. It's like a full-time job. There's never a dull moment with your hair. Even if I have my hair in a twist out, which usually that's my go-to style. So I will wash, condition, you know, deep condition my hair, twist it up. I might leave it twisted up for a couple days and that may last me, the twist out may last me for a week or two. But at the same time, I also need to know that if I switch up my styles, while I have this twist out and put more product in my hair, I'm gonna have to wash it more often. I'm gonna have to put more stuff in it more often because sometimes it just gets really dry. Don't think that going natural is just an easy thing. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's best for the long run for your hair, in my opinion, but you just gotta understand that it's a lot of work. Number three, natural hair products cost a lot of money. The good ones do. There are some uh, exceptions to this rule. Uh, for example, African Pride has some good products for cheap. Their products are like five or six dollars each. But for the most part, when I'm buying different products, I'm paying at least 10, 11, 12, maybe 15 dollars at the lowest for these products. And they cost a pretty penny. It's definitely an expense that you need to break down with your expenses when you're doing that. If you're trying to figure out how much money you spend a month, natural hair products needs to be an option in there because you spend a good amount of money, okay? And for some reason, there's this misconception with, you know, some black people that, well, there was a meme that was going around like, oh, once a girl goes natural, that mean you know she ain't got no money. Pause, no. Cause I've spent probably hundreds and hundreds of dollars on natural hair products over the years. If I wasn't spending that money, I could easily go buy me a lace front wig or, whatever y'all doing with y'all hair. I could easily do all that, but the fact of the matter is, like I said before, I think being natural is better for the health of your hair. 
So, and me personally going natural was just because I wanted to embrace my natural curl pattern. I used to be one of those people that was always getting relaxers. Um, I would always tell my other friends who were natural, like, no, going natural not for me. My hair is too thick for me to be dealing with that all the time. Look at me now. Look at me now. My hair is fully reverted back to its natural state and I'm loving it. But yeah, if you want to go natural, you're probably going to spend a lot of money. Probably. You could probably find some ways around that, but yeah, you're probably going to spend a lot of money. Sorry about that. Okay. Number four, and this is also very important because there are some people that are called natural hair Nazis out here and, you know, feel like if you're natural, you shouldn't, you shouldn't want to wear a wig. You shouldn't want to straighten your hair, which, okay, you shouldn't want to straighten it all the time, but you can still straighten it and your hair still be healthy as long as it's done in the correct way. You shouldn't wear weaves. You know, all this different type of stuff. Uh, you shouldn't want to get uh, protective styling all the time. Like I said, that goes back to me saying everyone's hair is different because some people's hair can't take all these different things that you want to do, especially, ooh, coloring your hair is a big one. There are so many natural hair people, like people in the natural hair community that are so against coloring your hair. I personally am not against it, but as with everything else, you have to get the right person to be able to do it. Don't just, some of these things, don't just try to do it yourself and then just think it's gonna come out good because you might damage your hair. So it's okay to switch it up because sometimes I might want straight long flowy hair to blow in the wind. I might want to get a, a blonde weave. In the next week, I might want box braids. It's okay to switch it up, okay? It's it's fine. It's the, the good thing about natural hair is that you can switch it up because it's so versatile. So you might as well do it. Number five, this might honestly be the most important thing. And this is one thing that I've learned in my years of being natural. Deep conditioning is so, so important. There's so many different types of deep conditioners. You have uh, ones that add protein. You have ones that uh, add moisture to your hair, add to the strength of your hair. Some that do a culmination of all those things. And if you don't deep condition, then sis, I'm sorry, but your hair is not thriving, okay? I'm gonna be real lenient and say you should at least deep condition once a month but really you should do it every once or two weeks or really every time you wash your hair you should be deep conditioning your hair and when you deep condition your hair adding heat is going to take it to a whole nother level and i promise you if you start deep conditioning your hair on a regular basis your hair is going to look a lot healthier i mean it's not going to have as much breakage i've seen it it's not going to have as much breakage it's going to be stronger it's going to be more moisturized You'll be able to actually manipulate it more to have it do what you want it to do. It's it's the best thing to do for your hair. If you feel like your hair is lacking in some area, man, go to Walmart or Target and find a deep conditioner. Like, seriously. So, y'all, that's it for now. Those are the five basic things. I could go on and on and on, but those are the basic things that you should know about being natural. I had to learn the hard way. It took me years to figure these things out for myself. Just, I mean, sometimes I was putting too much heat on my hair. I just had heat damage like two months ago because I decided to straighten my hair for the holiday. And then once I washed my hair again, I had a bunch of pieces of hair that just stayed straight because I didn't do it correctly because I am not a professional stylist. It, it is what it is, okay? things happen it's okay if you know you're struggling a little bit with your natural hair it's fine we all go through it like I said everyone's hair is not the same so even if you watch a hundred videos a week on natural hair you still not gonna be a 100% expert on what to do with your hair don't forget to hit that like button down below and also subscribe so that you can see all of my future uploads and everything I got going on with my hair coming up so thanks again for watching and 